My name's Adrian Sykes. Uh, we live at Blindalong on the Southern Tablelands in New South Wales. We get about 650 mils of rainfall there and we join about 4,000 ewes annually in a merino um, sheep enterprise. The drought lot was built about 15 years ago, Dad put it in, and it was funded through a CMA program at the time. And the idea is with the drought lot is just to get pressure off paddocks um, when it doesn't rain, quite simply. So our strategy generally is to keep core breeders and feed them through the drought and having a drought lot allows us to do that without damaging the rest of the property. I don't think it costs us any more to do that than it would be to feed in the paddock. Our drought lot has five pens, three troughs, so four pens share one trough for two pens and then one pen has its own trough. We fill four pens with sheep and we drift feed, so we trail feed on the ground in the empty pen then open the gates, the sheep run into that pen to feed and we then feed in the next empty pen and then allow the sheep through the gate and so on until they're fed. We run about 800 sheep in each pen or one of the big considerations is managing shy feeders and the drift system makes that quite easy because you can stand at the gate and just take the tail out each time they come through the gate and if you we found going quite hard on the tail for the first two or three weeks really reduced our mortality. We chose to feed on the ground rather than feed in troughs because obviously it's a lot easier for construction. You don't have to build the troughs, you don't have to clean the troughs and getting the feed into them, we just feed with a standard feed trailer. It falls out in the centre of it so we don't have to manage that at all. Uh, we just haven't had any health issues arising from trail feeding. We haven't joined in the drought lot, but I no, have no issue in doing so. I think it would be successful. Yeah, having the benefits of the drought lot, obviously are getting stock off your paddocks and you, you're managing your ground cover, you're managing your soils and pastures much better. It, it simplifies your decision-making process around your stocking rate during drought, I think, because you don't have the complication of knocking your property around, you're making decisions based on your financial position and what your plan is, what you're trying to achieve um, during that drought lot without the worry of damaging your property and losing topsoil and all of that. Your animal health is your key focus. So you really need to understand the nutritional requirements of your animals. Um, you need to know what weight they went in at and condition score. Acidosis is going to be one of the key health issues to monitor. Um, things like changing loads of grain that can cause issues. Letting sheep out of the drought lot, you can have problems. So after rain, you know, if you get a good break, we've our typical strategy was to keep them in there for a little bit longer than you thought you might, or certainly than you'd like to. We would make sure ours were fully fed before they went out onto pasture and they went out um, sometime in the middle of the day so they'd had their feed filled up and they didn't go and gorge themselves on fresh clover. And you also want to make sure their vaccinations are up to date. You want to make sure they're six in, or six in one for pulpy kidney in particular. And we did at times let them out for a couple of hours, put them back in for a couple of days and then let them go. On say the third day, once they've had some access to green feed for a couple of days, um, for a couple of hours at a time, just to make sure that, that that transition is as smooth as it can be. There are a whole range of systems and pen layouts that you can choose that will work. And it's about finding something that works for your property and you know, your existing infrastructure and your own specific location. But once you do get it built, there are some, some things with running the drought lot that, uh, that you, you do need to get right. And um, certainly understanding the nutritional requirements of your sheep is one of them. Making sure you have clean and fresh water available to sheep constantly and making sure your shy feeders are managed, acidosis is managed and 
your salt lime and mag I think is really important as well. So they're the key ones I think. But as far as I, I, and I have the, the other thing with construction, I really think you want to try and keep it simple because you only need something that's simple. Well, formerly we had a bore that we used to water stock in the drought lot, but we found when it really got dry, that bore wasn't supplying enough water. So we ended up pumping from um, the creek to fill the tank that the bore um, formerly went into with a fire pump and poly pipe, which was only a temporary arrangement. But since then we have um, installed a water system across the property, which we have solar panels and a, a pump, which pumps up to a tank on top of the hill and then reticulates through the property. And it also reticulates down to the drought lot. So it's on the same water supply now as the, the rest of the, the property. So. We're lucky that we do have permanent creeks and we struggled to get water to the drought lot in the last drought, but we've since upgraded our water infrastructure. So that won't be a problem next time around.